We're talking about um, Jason Collins coming out the closet, admitting to being gay. What's your opinion on that? You know, honestly, I was just talking about that a few minutes ago. You know, I kind of applaud the brother for, you know, pretty much throwing up a finger to anyone who had a problem with him being himself. Right. But if I really had a problem with it, I'd probably have a problem with the media for really hyping it up. I really don't see why it's such a big deal. Yeah. You know? Okay. Thank you. you going to be. There you go, man. Thanks for the call. All right. I'm going to take some calls later because a lot, a lot of people right now just want to give shout outs, which is fine. But I, I really want to get into this. I really want to get into this. And my thing, and I applaud the brother too. Jason Collins, I applaud the brother for being who he is. And, you know, I applaud that. But there's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with gay rights. There's nothing wrong with none of that. And a lot of people don't know that Jason Collins actually got a phone call from President Barack Obama. He actually got a phone call from President Barack Obama. So where is all this coming from? We have to look at the significance of this because this is very orchestrated. If you look at all of this, it seems very, very orchestrated. And if you notice, there have been a lot of black people so-called coming out the closet and just a lot of black people who are gay in the media lately. Really heavy in the last few years. If you look at the, there are not too many black shows out, but if you look at the few black shows that's on television, especially the reality shows, a lot of black gay men. There's nothing wrong with that, but let's, let's ask the question, why? Because again, when things are just random, sometimes they can be a little bit too random. And it seems very orchestrated, like there's some kind of agenda being pushed. And I'm not saying good or bad. I'm, again, I, I, whatever your lifestyle is, I pop my collar to you. I have no problem with gay folks. I pop my collar to you. But let's look at why certain things are orchestrated. We got to just look at the political aspect of it. See, you have to understand right now, they're trying to get a gay marriage bill passed. The Supreme Court is looking into the gay marriage thing, the same-sex marriage. So they're really trying to get this gay marriage thing passed. So let's look at the real deal of why we're seeing all this stuff. And the thing is, trying to get the gay marriage bill passed, that's going to be very revolutionary. And what people do, what groups try to do when they try to get a bill passed or a law passed or some kind of... Um, some kind of rights for their organization people generally try to latch on or attach themselves or make a correlation with their group and the civil rights movement have you noticed that whenever people want to get something popping they try to correlate themselves with the civil rights movement that the whole um what was that the occupy wall street people they tried to do that they out there singing we shall overcome and all that now all of them could eat a dick as far as I'm concerned, I, I wasn't going for that. But people try to correlate themselves and latch themselves onto the civil rights movement and use that struggle as their struggle or to compare it to their struggle. Because again, the civil rights struggle in the 1960s, that was very real. That was a group of people who were on the very bottom who got out here and made noise. We took those lumps. Our brothers and sisters took those beatings and, and got some things done. We did get some things done. And that inspired the world. That inspired the world. Because at that point, we were at a, uh, the mentality we had, we had nothing to lose. So we went out there and put in that work. And that's very inspirational to a lot of people. And the thing is, like I said, a lot of these groups are trying to make that correlation comparing gay rights to civil rights. And I have a problem with that, though. I have no problem with people wanting to get married. If you're a gay person, you want to have, get married to another gay person, that's fine. I think they should let you get married to whoever you want to get married to. It's nobody's business who wants to get married to who. I have no problem with that. That's cool in the game. Love who you want to love, get married who you want to get married to. But I do have a problem with people trying to use the gay rights and compare it to the civil rights movement because it ain't the damn same. Let's, let's be very real here. It is not the same. And when you try to do that, you, you 
to a degree, you minimize the severity of what happened to black people in this country. Because the thing is, our gay brothers and sisters, even though some people might deny you certain rights, they didn't sick goddamn German shepherds on you. Even though you were denied some rights about marriage and things like that, they didn't make you drink from different damn water fountains. They didn't put water hoses on you. I mean, let's let's keep it 110. So we're talking apples and oranges here. Because they didn't give you a few rights, they didn't redline you as far as housing and, and railroad you into impoverished neighborhoods. They didn't purposely miseducate your kids. They're not purposely railroading you into a prison industrial system for profit. So that's where I say we can't compare the two. What's going on in the gay community and what's happening to black folks is totally different. So I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of those comparisons. But I get what you're trying to do. I get exactly what you're trying to do. You're trying to latch on to something so you can get momentum. And, and black people have always been used like that. Black people have always been used like that. And we see a lot of the black gay agenda being pushed in the media. Just like with this um, Jason Collins dude, this is like a big media story. Why? Why is it such a big media story? Because it's orchestrated. Because this whole thing, the black community has been wrongly a accused of being very homophobic. We've been wrongly accused for being extremely homophobic. And a lot of people say, well, black people don't like homosexuality because black people are so religious. Black people hate homosexuals because the religious and the church. That is a major crock of bullshit. That is a crock of bullshit if I've ever heard one. You understand me? That is a total crock of bullshit. The black community has always been welcome, welcoming to black homosexuals, especially during segregation. During segregation, the safest place for a gay black person, even today, to be honest, the safest place for a gay black person is a black church. The black church is extremely forgiving. Black church is all about turning the other cheek. The black church is, they, they've always looked out for all people no matter what walk of life you are from. And, and not only that, just the whole black community in general, really during segregation, black people knew who was gay and who wasn't gay, but we didn't shit on them. Let's, let's, let's look at history and let's be very realistic. The black church, we, they, the black churches have gay choir directors. We know who the gay choir directors are. Even now we do, we have them. We don't shit on them. We welcome them. Those are our brothers. Damn it. How many churches can you go to and see a black gay choir director? All over the place. We don't shit on them. And look, look at the black community back in the day. Even during the civil rights movement, you had James Baldwin. He was a homosexual. He's a black man who was gay. Nobody shitted on James Baldwin. That was our brother. The community popped their collar to James Baldwin. Let's go back even farther than that. During the Harlem Renaissance era, Writers like Langston Hughes. Langston Hughes was gay. People knew that back then. Nobody shit on Langston Hughes. That was our brother. Look at entertainers from the 50s and 60s. Little Richard, who's allegedly gay, but Little Richard's very effeminate. I mean, he never quote unquote came out, but we, you know, Little Richard is Little Richard. Black folks love Little Richard. We've always loved Little Richard. Johnny Mathis from back in the day. Black folks knew what was up with Johnny Mathis. The singer Johnny Mathis for y'all too young to, re to know who he is. The gay dude, gay singer, but gay black man. Another civil rights leader, um, Baynard Rushton from the 1960s who was down with the civil rights struggle. He was openly gay. They knew that. They welcomed that brother. They didn't shit on Baynard. The dance instructor, the uh, the Alvin Ailey dance instructor, y'all know the, the, the Harlem Alvin Ailey school and all that. Alvin Ailey was gay. They knew that. That was our brother. Nobody was tripping on Alvin Ailey. But you have to understand that after segregation, 
during integration, when black people started to integrate, black folks found out that white folks, especially the religious conservative right, shitted on gay people. They didn't like gay people and they still don't openly. And again, black people usually see things through the eyes of whites and blacks socially emulate whites. So that's when black folks started getting on that. Okay, let's stay away from the blacks. Blacks got on it then after they saw that whites weren't down with that. Because even though there is a defined gay white community, the religious conservative right, they ain't fucking with gay people. So whereas black gay people to this day can still go into the church and still be welcomed by the church, a white gay person, the, the a religious setting, they're not fucking with them, especially if they're openly gay. They really get looked down upon in the religious right community, in the white community. That's why these same-sex marriages, these bills are, are very difficult to get passed because of that white religious right. They're the ones who ain't down with that. It ain't just us. It ain't the black community. The thing is they keep trolling out these black folks and saying, hey, look, if these, you know how homophobic the Negroes are, they can accept uh, a homosexual you should be able to do it too that's the whole thing that's the whole message they're trying to show if the negroes can do it and we know how homophobic they are if they can accept um, homosexuality in their community you should be able to do it too that's the whole argument and again my thing is that we've always been um, accepting of that so we got to just look at it for what it is again we, we, we know who's gay like Luther Vandross a lot of people knew what was up with his sexuality. People didn't trip on that. That was our brother. But the thing is, in, in the last few years, they're really showing a lot of gay black men coming out the closet, and they're rewarding a lot of these brothers for coming out the closet. Again, you come out the closet, and if you, especially if you flame and you get on TV, you get a TV show just like that. Look at Frank Ocean. When Frank Ocean came out, out of the closet, his record sales really start popping and they rewarded him with those Grammys. I, Frank Ocean, and many people have said this, Frank Ocean got those Grammys because he came out. I mean, his album was cool, but I mean, come on. Frank Ocean really got them Grammys because that was his reward for being a black man coming on out that closet. Now, some people might say, well, there's, because I've heard some, some black um, females saying that they're, they're WNBA players who the women come out the closet. How come there's no big fanfare? Because people just naturally assume that female basketball players are all studs. So that's not no news. That's just a, a natural assumption. So that's not really revolutionary in the minds of society. But the thing is, black people have to stop being politically silly because again we got to understand when we're being used and again I have no problem with anybody coming out that's not the problem I have the problem I have is the politics behind it and black folks not utilizing the politics behind it because now what they're going to do I'm, I'm mark my words there's going to be a, a rapper come out pretty soon or they're going to promote a rapper who's full out gay that's coming pretty soon. Frank Ocean is the closest thing to a gay rapper coming out. That's the closest thing because his his music is hip hop influenced. He's an R&B singer, but his music is hip hop influenced. But the gay rapper is coming soon and they're going to put a lot of money behind the, the openly gay rapper. They're going to promote him, put a lot of money behind him. They're starting to make that correlation now. Do y'all see, if y'all look at TV at night, they got this dude named Sean T. They got this hip hop abs commercial. I know y'all seen this commercial. It comes on usually late at night, but it comes on all during the day. And it's got this dude, this little light-skinned dude. He's like, yo, I'm Sean T, and I can help you get your abs together. And all you got to do is tilt, tuck, and tighten. He's doing these real moist moves. <laughs> He's doing this hip-hop workout. And it's just real moist. And I'm looking at this. I'm like, this nigga's moist. I'm like, what? Don't no straight dude tilt, tuck, and tighten. I'm like, what's up? So I did some research on that dude. That, that Sean T dude is gay. He's beyond. He's not even moist. The Sean T 
hip hop abs workout dude is straight out gay. He's actually married to a dude. A lot of folks don't know that. So again, there's a there's like an agenda there. They're throwing all these gay black men out here like that. And again, ain't nothing wrong with being a gay black man. Nothing wrong with that at all. But I'm just seeing the agenda behind it. A lot of gay black men are getting a lot of props these days. Why is that? Again, it's the political thing. They're trying to make that correlation. Gay, black, civil rights. Gay, black, civil rights struggle. That's the correlation they're trying to make. Now, my thing is this. If you're going to be used, people understand you're being used and understand the game of politics black people don't know how to negotiate black people just allow themselves to be used black people just allow people to come in run that game on you and you you just get used and you don't you don't hustle the game for what it is you got to hustle the game and the thing is if you're going to be used you need to get something in return you need to get something out the deal you need to get something out of the deal because the thing is i did a show about black people not understanding the difference between friends and allies see black people when people throw you a bone and they get around you and say hey brothers let's stand together let's make sure the cameras are watching us and while we're standing together people are using you as an ally so they can align themselves with you get your energy get your struggle utilize it for their own benefit and when they're done they're gonna kick your ass to the curb and then you're gonna be like damn i thought i had a friend they're using you as an ally there's nothing wrong with having allies just understand that you're being an ally and you both need to be getting something out the deal black folks just want to get accepted any other group come around black folks holding them holding hands with them putting their arms around them black folks are just so happy to get a hug from white folks they don't care about what else they get they don't care about the political agenda behind it and then when whites kick your ass to the curb you sitting around looking dumb so get something out of the deal when these groups align themselves with you so you got to say to them okay if you want to use me and put me up as the poster boy of the the gay community and the civil rights and all that when this is all said and done when you get the same-sex marriage bills passed when we in the black community have a, a situation we need you to stand up for us too and you need to be able to call them out on that so all of these other gay communities outside of the black community you need to say to them okay when shit goes down with us when we need you to to stand up for our for fair prison treatment where are you going to be are you going to say something or you're just going to turn your backs and twiddle your thumbs when we get another situation like Trayvon Martin when they kill one of our kids in the streets and then get off scot-free are you going to be out there in the forefront marching with us or making noise with us this is what you have to ask them and there's nothing wrong with that because we're rallying for their struggle they need to rally for ours so we just have to play the political game correctly black people are very politically silly and i talked about that a few weeks ago with that whole um rick ross thing that rick ross lost his reebok deal because of um what he said in a rap and the feminist movement the white feminist females they got a hold of that and ran with it and then they started to get a couple of black females to rally along with them who they don't give a shit about the black female community, but they know how to ally themselves with different groups in order to get their agenda met. And then once that agenda is met, they start kicking everybody to the curb. But the thing is, you got to be able to negotiate demands. You got to be able to negotiate. And the thing is, why did Barack Obama call Jason Collins? It goes back to him. Why did Barack Obama call him? Because a lot of people say, well, Barack Obama doesn't do anything for the black community, which he doesn't. I'd be the first to admit that. And I voted for Barack Obama twice. And President Obama has not done really too much for the black community. I've been a big critic of that. But I kind of blame us for that. I blame the black community because we haven't put forth any demands. We have not put forth any demands. And the thing is, the reason why barack obama called that guy instead of 
other black people who've had all types of injustices placed upon them. He called him because the thing is the lesbian gay community broke bread. The lesbian gay community were big supporters of Barack Obama. And I'm talking financial support. Money talks, people. Y'all got to understand that. And I'm talking to black folks in particular right now. Money talks, black folks. We talked about this in Hidden Colors. You got to have an economic base. You got to have an economic foundation. Black folks got to be about that paper. I advise you all to get Hidden Colors 2 if you have not seen it. Go to HiddenColorsFilm.com or Amazon.com. Don't get the bootleg because that goes against group economics and it defeats the whole purpose of what we talked about in the film. But get the original film and, and study what we talked about as far as group economics. President Barack Obama can call this brother up and and commend him on his bravery for coming out as a gay man because the lesbian gay community, when Barack Obama came to the West Coast, they raised almost $8 million for Barack Obama. Money talks. So, of course, he's going to talk about their needs. They raised $8 million. They broke real bread. Black folks don't do that. Money talks. See, we come to the table on some emotional shit. We got to stop being politically silly. We come to the table like, we, since we all black, you need to do this for us. We come to it with emotions. Money talks. And we got the money. We just choose to spend it with everybody damn else instead of circulating it around each other. We get real politically silly when it comes to circulating our money around each other and we don't have an economic base and we don't know how to really pool our money together and get shit done. So we can learn something from the gay lesbian community. What can we learn from them? First of all, stop the hating because this ain't about moral or none of that shit. We can sit up and hate all the ancient shit. Fuck all that. I don't get into that. I don't care what they do. They, they can marry, do whatever they want to do. And I pop my call up to them for being able to organize their resources to get shit done. That's very commendable. And black folks need to learn from that, how people can pool their resources together and make shit happen because money talks. We should have been doing shit like that. That's why none of our needs are getting met. They are organized. Other groups of people are very organized and that's been our problem. We can't get organized to handle business. We got to be on that dumb nigga shit all the time. Fucking off the money, tricking it off rims, shoes, just nigga shit and not pooling it and saying, hey, look, we're going to get our money together and get this built. We're going to get our money together, put this politician in office so they can um, satisfy our agenda. We got to stop being politically silly, people, and be about the business. Let's see who's on the phone. 